So I'm going to be explaining to you how to make cacao at home or well, with I make it using a blender. If you don't have a blender, you can also heat up very slowly in a saucepan, not getting the temperature, uh, temperature too high. Um, but yeah, if you do have a blender, it's a really good way to go um, just to kind of keep the temperature down. So starting off, this is a block of raw cacao. Um, sometimes it will come in chunks. Uh, the difference between raw cacao and cocoa powder, which you get in the shops, is usually cocoa powder has been processed, so heat treated, it's gone through a lot of processing, and it often loses a lot of those um, compounds that we're actually looking for in the cacao, the ones that are kind of very heart opening um, and are used ceremonially. Uh, so generally as well, when it comes to ceremonial cacao, it would often be organic, um, from places that are sustainably grown and harvested. Um, with this block in particular, it's a very sacred piece of cacao because it's also been prayed over, it's been stoned round, and so it's had a lot of, yeah, just blessings kind of um, infused into it. Um, but even just getting yourself just kind of a raw organic cacao is a good place to start, even if it hasn't been stoned over. So I'm going to show you roughly how to chop it up. So when working with cacao, um, a good place to start is with about 20 grams, is what do you consider like a meditative dose, uh, 15 to 20 grams is like a meditative dose, 25 to 30 grams is a little bit of a higher, more activating dose, and 50 grams is around a ceremonial dose, like 50 to 60, and that's quite, a, a, quite, an activating, um, yeah, quite an activating amount. Um, if you're an everyday cacao drinker, then about 50 to 20 is where you'd want to be at, and then also just being mindful of what you incorporate into cacao so it doesn't take a heavy toll on your system. Um, so yeah, so I'm not going to weigh this out today, but if you'd like to, you can weigh it out with a scale. I just work intuitively based on the cacao that I'm using and how much feels appropriate for my body at that time. And I'm also making some for the person recording. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add that into the blender. Yeah, so that was also just the message that I gave at the beginning on um, not uh, heating it up too much. Is just with the heat treatment that happens when making cocoa powder um, and losing all those compounds. So you kind of want to not boil it on the stove for very long because you're going to be also just damaging some of those compounds. And you'll see now when I. Um, yeah, when I actually make this cacao, I'm going to use, I just boiled the kettle, so I'm going to be adding some hot water in, but I'm first going to add a little bit of, I use um, oat milk, you can also use almond or any other non-dairy milk, ideally. Um, if you're being just quite strict with the cacao, you can also just use straight water, but normally I would use some kind of plant-based milk. Um, and then adding some other things into the cacao. So you can add things like cinnamon into your cacao. Cayenne pepper is an activating compound. They activate together and it can be yeah, quite an uplifting experience. Um, a little bit of turmeric if you're trying to activate some of those the properties of turmeric within you. Um, cacao is an activator, so whatever you add with her will also activate. So a little bit of ashwagandha, a little bit of turmeric, yeah, whatever it is that you'd like to add. Today. I'm adding a little bit of this, just the salt that I have, which is got from the Caribbean, that's from the ocean there. I quite enjoy adding some of that in. Um, sweetness wise, cacao, normally I'd use either coconut sugar or today I'm making use of dates. So, yeah, just depending on what sweetness. Um, Fresh cacao can be yeah, quite a loving energy, but to bring out our sweetness, sometimes we add some sweetness. Um, we'll add a bit of coconut cream in if you want it to be a bit, bit creamier. Um, something that I add in, I'm, it's not always necessarily the biggest recommendation, but I would like some today, it feels appropriate, is some mesquite. Uh, when doing a dieta, I got the firm um, message not to, but with a dieta, you normally go quite, yeah, quite um, bland, you could say. This very straight cacao, very yeah, just authentic, plain. But yeah, it's very. Um, 
for activation. And then I'm um, giving one moment, I'm going to get some ashwagandha quickly just to add in. Okay, okay I'm back. <laughs> I'm just going to add some ashwagandha powder in. Um, I make capsules, and so I press the last of my ashwagandha powder into capsules, which is why I'm emptying some out into here. But normally you just have plain ashwagandha powder, which you can add in. Um, yeah, so once you've got that, then um, if you're not the best at intuitive dosing, then I would recommend using a mug. So. Pull about that much of if I'm making two doses here, so I'm gonna add in my cold liquid first and then bringing in the hot water, I'll then add another full mug plus the remaining amount of the first mug, which um, I didn't add in. Okay. And then yeah, so then you'll take this um, and you'll blend it. Uh, I can't tell you why exactly, but when I was doing my dieta, there was a, a thing in me that also just need to blend it three times, so I still do that. And often when I'm blending, although you probably won't hear me, is I often sing over my capel or set intentions with it. So that's something you can also do. And yeah, you just blend and I'll show you what it looks like after I blend. Cool, so now we should have some cow that is ready for consumption. And we'll pour some straight into a mug. If you've got some beautiful cacao cups, that's also something beautiful. And yeah, that should be ready to consume. Yeah, so with your cacao, it's also like a really good idea to, you know, kind of have a seed, see some intention. With cacao as well, the intention with which it's kind of harvested and brought forward to us, the intention with which it's made, and the intention with which we actually sit down and drink it also plays a part in how she works with us and through us um, as the loving handmaiden that she is. Um, other things that you can do as well, depending on where you're at with your journey and what's relevant for you, but also yeah, just what you incorporate with her really does yeah, enhance. So some people choose to use blue, lot blue lotus with cacao. Um, I find that incredibly activating. It opens up their eye quite intensely. So I tend to be away from it, but it is something that many people do do. Um, and like I said, the sort of nutritional side of it, so like your ashwagandha, your macas maybe, can also be used in tandem with cacao. Unless you're doing a DSM, then that is another story altogether. Anyway, I'm going to love and leave you here, and that is how you make cacao.